33 countries in Africa border the ocean and form part of its vast coastline, which is just under 19,000 miles long. 40% of Africa's population live by the ocean, depending on the coastal and marine ecosystems and the resources they provide to make a living. These resources include food, catching fish to eat, as well as mangrove wood and sand, which can be used for building. The sea itself provides a means of transport as people travel by boat from one place to another. Tourists are also attracted to coastal areas because of beautiful beaches and the variety of marine life. This generates a valuable income for the local people. But the combination of a huge growth in coastal populations, development in fishing equipment and pressure from international fishermen has put coastal resources under threat. Along the coast, the numbers of fish are declining due to overfishing and use of destructive fishing methods. Corals are being trawled and the stone used for construction. Coastal forests and mangroves are also being destroyed as people don't replace the trees that they've chopped down. Pollution is also a huge problem, with oil, plastic and sewage being dumped into the sea. As the coastal environment provides us with so many things, we have to learn to manage it sustainably. This means learning to use marine resources like plants and animals in a way which provides for our needs now, as well as in the future. In this film, we'll concentrate on small coastal communities and see how fishermen are adapting their fishing practices to preserve their local environment. Off the coast of Tanzania lies Mafia Island Marine Park. Within the warm waters surrounding the island are a huge range of tropical habitats, including coral reefs and mangroves. Turtles can also be found nesting here. But before the marine park was established, the traditional methods of dynamite and seine net fishing were causing huge damage to the sea. With the help of WWF, the marine park has been working with local fishermen to introduce less destructive methods of fishing and find alternative sources of income. The aim is to reduce the damage to the reefs and mangroves and encourage people to manage the marine environment more sustainably. Dynamite fishing is the most destructive form of fishing. Fishermen throw dynamite into the sea, which blows up underwater. This destroys the coral and stuns the fish so that they float up to the surface and are easy to catch. Dynamite uh, is very bad to, to be used in fishing because when you explode at a coral or at a sea bottom, uh, the place will remain five years, more than five years, will be not productive. So uh, for corals, if you blasted corals, the corals will die and uh, it will take more than five years to start again. Therefore, if corals is the center for fish production, is the center for fish to stay, is the center for fish to, 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 to accumulate. So it means uh, you destroy the whole system of, uh, of fish and fishing. Therefore, if you use dynamite, it means you kill yourself. So, uh, and also, uh, dynamite is dangerous to the fisher. Local fisherman Mwanya Selemani explains what happened to him when he practiced dynamite fishing. You go out into the sea, you take the dynamite, you take a tin, and you put the dynamite in the tin. You put a wick in it, and then you light it, and then you have to throw it out into the sea. And if you are late throwing it out, then it explodes. And when it explodes, then you get hurt. When people like me were using this dynamite method of fishing, the fish left this area and the place was poisoned. 
In the marine park, there shouldn't be this type of fishing. I tried to explain to my brothers that we should fish in a good way. So now, I tell people not to practice dynamite fishing. And if I see them doing it, I tell them that it's illegal. We have to stop throwing these bombs into the sea. If we don't, future generations won't reap the benefits from the sea that we have had. Using seine nets is another destructive method of fishing. These nets have a very small mesh size with holes that are less than two inches wide. This means that all fish are caught, both big and small, as it's not selective. When the fishermen pull the seine nets in, the holes close together so nothing can escape. The nets are dragged along the bottom of the sea floor, destroying both the coral and the sea bottom, which are both breeding grounds for fish. There's also a lot of waste, as most of the fish caught are too small to sell. Seine nets are very expensive, often owned by wealthy people, who employ fishermen to use their nets, but take all the profits. To have a unit, of, uh, a fishing unit for it, you need a lot of, of, of money. That's why rich people own a lot of unsustainable fishing units, and the, uh, the community, the little community which went for uh, fishing, is just a casual labor to that uh, person. So this unsustainable practice of fishing uh, causes a community to have nothing. Uh, instead of having their fishing vessel, of having their gears, uh, they just uh, being uh, rebelers to somebody who have uh, capital. Masood Kipanga from the Marine Park believes that these harmful and unsustainable fishing practices must stop and explains why. These unsustainable fishing gears, uh, they, are, they destroy the environment. And if they destroy the environment, so the production of fish is going down. If, if the corals area have been destroyed, if the mangroves are being destroyed, if the sea bottom is being destroyed, there is, there is no production of fish. But if we start uh, using sustainable fishing gears, the corals will grow up, the mangrove will grow up, and the sea bottom will remain safe for fish to breed and feed. So I think the production of fish will go up. And if the production will go up and the fishing is sustainable, then I think the income or the, pro the, the, the amount of fish will increase. Together with WWF, the Marine Park has introduced new fishing methods to the local fishermen. One of these is the use of fence traps. Fences are erected from the beach into the sea so that as the tide goes out, only the large fish get caught in the corner trap. The little fish escape through gaps in the fence. The fishermen can remove other animals like turtles and fish which are poisonous to eat, so the trap is selective. Fisherman Bakari Nahoda has already seen the benefits of fence traps. There are many benefits of fence trapping. The first is that we catch big fish, which is good. And the second is that there is a wide variety in the type of fish we catch. Unlike seine net fishing, fence traps are locally and communally owned, so all the profits made from selling the fish go directly to the fishermen and their families, and not to rich businessmen from other areas. This type of uh, fishing uh, is mostly owned by one or two or three peoples. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, the income uh, generated by uh, this f type of fishing is just divided equally uh, to all those people who own this. Therefore, uh, if you compare uh, in income, this one uh, 
a fisher who fish with the, this type of fishing, his, his income is higher compared to Senate fisher. Uh, for ecological view, this system is better because this is sustainable. Uh, fish has just come and set his gears here and therefore it has no any other effect. You don't use bait, you don't use anything. So uh, you just uh, wait for fish to come here freely and enter uh, and then you catch. But for senate, you just uh, destroy the uh, environment of the sea ground, you destroy corals, you destroy everything which is being uh, uh, entangled by the net. Therefore, that one is unsustainable, it's destructive, this one is sustainable, non-destructive to anything. Another sustainable fishing practice is the use of gill nets. Gill nets are better than seine nets because their holes are larger, over two and a half inches wide. The nets are set in the water so they only catch bigger fish and are not dragged along the seabed. As the gill nets are cheap to buy, each fisherman can afford his own net. One disadvantage of the gill nets is that they can catch turtles, which will drown if they're not spotted. So the best way to use the nets is to trawl them in deeper water. If you use gill nets, or oh, sustainable fishing gear of gill nets, uh, this one is good because uh, you just set your net at the sea. Then you leave it to have a unit of gill net it's very cheap. Even a common fisherman can own two to three to four pieces of gill nets. Fisherman Hassani Nahoda used to use seine nets, but now uses gill nets instead. Using gill nets means that the big fish swim into the nets by themselves. This way, you don't spoil the environment as you do with the other fishing methods, which catch coral, stones, seaweed, and other small creatures. With gill nets, you put them in at night and pull them out in the morning, nice and easily. So you get fish, but you don't spoil the environment. This is a good way of fishing, and many of us fishermen have realized this. If you ruin the environment, the next generations won't see it. We are already spoiling it, so we need to start conserving it now. When WWF came to tell us why we should stop using seine nets, we couldn't disagree. The use of zoning has also been introduced by the Marine Park, who, together with the community, decided to demarcate the coastal areas into different zones. One of these is a no-take zone, which means that no one can take anything, even shells, from this area. When we decide to have no-take zone, it means we want to protect a fish production. We want to protect a marine resource production. Or we want to protect a natural resource because take zone can be only cannot be on fish only, can be on mangroves, no take zone, can be on corals, no take zone, and at a take zone, nothing can be taken there. You are not allowed to take even a stone. You are not allowed to take even a tree, a piece of mangrove. You are not allowed, and this will cause uh, the place to be natural. So, if we have a natural production. Uh, it means uh, uh, our stock will not disappear. Mangroves provide shelter and breeding grounds for fish and other types of marine life. In the past, people on Mafia Island used to chop the mangrove trees down for firewood. As they weren't replanting them at the same rate, it meant that fish stocks were dwindling as their habitats were destroyed. The Marine Park ran an education program which helped the Mafia community to understand the importance of mangroves to their coastal environment. Now with the replanting of mangroves, the situation is being resolved. Turtles, like fish, are killed for their meat. But as they are an endangered species, it's very important to conserve them. 
The turtle monitoring program was introduced here to ensure that the different types of turtles can nest in peace and that the hatchlings can get to the sea without any problem. Turtle officers patrol the beaches every day checking for turtle eggs and hiding the nests from potential predators. Omari Abdullah explains why he and his colleagues also remove rubbish from the beach. Rubbish is very dangerous for the baby turtles when they are heading for the sea. That's why it's good to clear rubbish from the beach and keep their path clean. If turtles come up against the rubbish, they can fall down and flip over. Then they can't get up again, so they die. Plastic bags in the sea are also a danger as the turtles get caught up in them. The monitoring scheme has seen an increase in the number of turtles in the region. This helps to maintain the diversity of the sea and also increase tourism potential for the area. The community will benefit a lot from preserving turtles. Firstly, the next generation will enjoy seeing the turtles if we look after them now. And secondly, tourists enjoy looking at the turtles and will pay to come and see them. The money that tourists bring will help villagers to build schools, clinics and provide many other benefits for the community. So it pays to conserve turtles now. In addition, WWF have introduced a micro-credit scheme on Mafia Island to provide alternative sources of income for former fishermen. Microcredit is a system whereby people are given a small loan to start a new business. Then they repay the loan through their new income. The idea behind the scheme is to take pressure off fish supplies by decreasing the number of fishermen going out to catch fish. The regularity of alternative incomes also means that the fishermen and their families have better financial stability. Mbaraka Abdul Rabi used to fish with seine nets, but the microcredit scheme convinced him to switch careers to the transport business. He now offers a valuable taxi service transporting people across the island. What I am looking for is progress in my life. As long as my needs are fulfilled, then that's fine. But if I don't have anything, then I will stay in the same place and there won't be any progress. But now I can see a future for my children and for me. Thomas Chale from WWF explains more about how microcredit has had an impact on Mafia Island. It's very important for people in the fishing communities to think about the alternative activities because of the pressure uh, people might cause on fishing. But the resources are limited and the more people concentrate on fishing, in the end you find that return on that fishing, uh, it might be, it be lower and lower and lower for a person. Therefore it's important to let a small group of people do fishing and others to think on other opportunities. Former fishermen and now business partners Mohamed Hassani and Kichungu Rajabu explain how they put down their nets in favor of running a fuel station. Here, islanders can buy kerosene for lamps and petrol for their cars. This business has changed their lives, as Mohamed explains. The fact that there are less fish here now is a big problem. If you consider the way we were fishing, we blasted the fish out of their homes and so they left to go to better places. Just like people, in the daytime they walk around but at night they go into their houses. With fish, it's the same. If you destroy their homes, they have nowhere to live, so they move on. I quit fishing because I agree with the people who want to conserve the marine park. 
Fishing with seine nets wasn't good because we were killing the other small creatures that aren't fish and also destroying the environment. And so I agreed to stop fishing to save marine life for the future. And I started this new job instead. Mohammed's partner Kichungu describes how his life has improved and offers advice to others. Anaweza kutafautisha sana, tafauti ipo. Kwa sababu sasa hivi ni mfanya biashara. For me there is a clear difference now because before I was a fisherman whereas now I am a businessman. There's a big difference in income alone. Here I get more than I did out at sea. Kwanza and the problem for conservationists is that they want to change the situation for the better. But because people aren't educated about it yet, they don't understand. But if you are educated about the issues, you will quickly understand because you will see the benefits that come with change. Because of this, you shouldn't insist on fishing, but try to do something else. We should listen to the conservationists. But the people who still insist on fishing, I think they are lost. They don't understand. The Mafia Island community has seen many changes both to its people's lives and to the coastal environment. High levels of poverty have been reduced through the introduction of alternative jobs. Fishermen are learning how to fish sustainably thanks to new types of net. Monitoring the marine wildlife has ensured its survival both above and below the sea, thus increasing the potential for visitors to the island. The community hopes that their success can provide a role model for other coastal communities in Africa.